So looking at some problems here, uh, we want to find general solutions of the, some equations. So some of the ones are a little bit special. So one of these ones is special. Sine x is equal to 1. So again, it's really about working out the pattern and where it's going to be. So if you have a look at our related angle, so inverse sine of 1 is going to be pi on 2, which means that every time you go around, it's going to be on the x-axis, on the, the positive y-axis. So what you want to do is make sure you can get round to that positive y-axis each time. Now there's a couple of ways you can do it. Using our formula like we've done before, we could say n times pi and then uh, add the minus 1 to the power of n, pi on 2. Really when you look at that, and I've, I've thrown some values into that equation, that's going to get you the, the same solution, it's going to get you a couple of solutions that are going to be the same. So you notice 0 and 1, basically if it's 0, it gets going to go to that axis and then add pi on 2. And if when n is 1, it's going to get to the negative axis and then subtract pi on 2. So you get pi on 2 for both of them. And then for the same for negative 1 and negative 2, it gives you that same solution. So that, that's that's quite fine. That That's a quite quite a fine solution. That's That, that gives us, the, the when n is a, some positive uh, some integer, it's going to give us a correct answer. The other way to do it would be to say, well, x could be in this case a situation where we get to the positive x-axis and just add pi on 2 each time. So quite happy to take 2k times pi, or 2n times pi. We're going to keep n being our integral number. So 2 times a positive number times pi, which would give us something on the positive x-axis each time, and then add pi on 2. Every time that will just go to positive x axis, add pi on 2. Even if it's a negative number, positive x axis, add pi on 2. It's going to be back there every time. So either one of those we'd be quite happy with because that's a, it's a formula that's giving us a general solution there. Same idea for cos, theta, cos of x is equal to 0. Where's cos of x equal to 0? It's pi on 2. So I've used that same idea there, is that we go 2 pi n and then add or subtract pi on 2. And we know that pi on 2 there is a related angle, but also cos of pi on 2, but cos of 3 pi on 2 would be 0 as well. So we go to the positive x-axis and then add pi on 2 there, or subtract pi on 2 there. And that will give us our related angle each time. Tan of x is equal to negative 1. Now, what would this a little bit different is that because it's negative 1, our quadrants that we're going to deal with are going to be in the second and fourth quadrants. So we're going to have to go back our related angle, and our related angle, inverse tan of 1, is pi and 4. So instead of, it's, it's, it's just a little bit of a change this time, instead of going to each axis and then adding to get in the first and qu fourth quadrant, first and third quadrant, what we're going to do is get to each the x-axis each time, so the positive x-axis or the negative x-axis, by multiplying n times pi. And remember, n's going to be integral, so some number times pi, but then we're going to subtract pi and 4. So when you subtract pi and 4 there, you go back into the second quadrant. Subtract pi and 4 from, from 0, 2 pi, 4 pi, you're going to end up going back into the fourth quadrant, which is when you're going to get 10, going to be 10 to be negative. So that's why it's negative or subtraction pi and 4 that time, in this case, because that was a negative there. So just be careful with those. Again, look for your pattern. Don't try and learn the formulas. Look for the pattern. Question 4 here, we've got secant of x is equal to minus 2, which really is a change that cos of x is going to be equal to minus a half. So again, cos negative, get our related angle. Inverse cos of a half is, half is pi and 3. So if we're looking at our axis here, where's cosine negative? We're going to be in the second and third quadrant. So we want to go back pi and 3 there, and we want to add pi and 3 there from the negative x-axis. So we want to get to the negative x-axis each time, which means we need to multiply pi by an odd number, because when pi is multiplied by an odd number, we get onto the negative x-axis, because that's pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi, and so on there. So that's what we're looking in this part. 2n minus 1 always will give us a negative number. No matter what n is, n, n is, that gives us a negative number. Multiply by pi, 
and then add or subtract pi on three, and that gives us our that gives us our general equation.